Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So a lot of change in the world is promoted or prompted by anger. Anger at the way things are done, anger at your situation, anger at the way other people think, etc, etc. But unfortunately, anger, although it can sort of ignite the drive to make change happen, it also causes resistance. It's the reason why Mother Teresa said that she would never walk against war, but she would walk for peace. And that's because Whenever you go up against something in anger, there is resistance to that which you are trying to fight against. For example, there's a war against drugs. And as far as I'm aware, it hasn't managed to stop drugs. <laughs> if anything, drugs are more prevalent now than they've ever been. If you think about when somebody's angry and they confront you in an angry manner, quite often you don't even hear what it is that has sparked the anger. You don't actually hear their grievance. All you get is the sensation of having anger thrown at you. And in my experience, when someone throws anger at me or comes at me in an angry manner, there are a number of different ways to sort of respond to that. Quite often, someone will respond by getting angry in return um, and the resistance goes like that. Other people just shut down and re refuse to acknowledge or to interact with somebody when they're angry and other people just walk away. They don't want to have anything to do with somebody who's angry. Um, I know that in, <laughs> I've only been in a couple of pubs when a fight's broken out when in, my, in my youth, and in all those instances, my definite response is to flee. <laughs> I definitely go into flight mode. I've been known to kind of trample over people to get away from a fight that's broken out. That's how strong my reaction is to something like that. But what I'm trying to say is that so many people are so passionate and get so angry about so many things, about the government, about different parties, um, different political parties, about the environment, about conspiracy theories and being awoke and things like this, but it comes from a place of anger. And when that energy is an angry energy, then what you're fighting against will resist you. And that doesn't mean that you should sit back and do nothing. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is there's a different way to go about it. You can create change by being in a state of peace, being in an open-hearted space. And for me, uh, my absolute sort of long-term, I suppose, idol, <laughs> and I'm not really one to have idols, is Nelson Mandela. Um, when he fought against apartheid, when he was there really fighting, um, he ended up being thrown into prison. Um, and that was the resistance to who he was and what he was doing right at the beginning of his sort of fight for freedom. But when he came out of prison, he was a very different person. The person he was then was at peace, who was open-hearted, forgiving, very, very much um, very centred, very authentic, and a whole other space. And the change that he was able to create from that space was sort of almost unbelievable um, in those times. And I don't believe he would have created the same amount of change if he'd been coming from the space of anger that he originally started at. I think when he was in prison, he went through some sort of transformation. Um, I can understand it because I've seen it happen with my clients, um, but this isn't really about that. So I'm not going to go into that part of things. <laughs> Enough to say that him in his angry state had a very different response to him in a centered, open-hearted space. And we're talking about big things here. We're talking about politics and environmental issues and sort of, you know, political regimes and all sorts of things like that. But what I'm talking about here is as applicable to you and your individual relationships and, you know, work and things like that, as it is to these huge, big political, global, things that we're, we're looking at. If you come at something in anger, even if you're pretending you're not angry, then the, the what you will be met with is resistance. The thing is you can't fake something like that. 
You can't pretend you're not angry when you are angry because the other person, no matter whether they realize it or not, they will sense it. Because the words you choose, the energy that you have in that moment is very different to the energy you would have than when you are coming from a space of compassion, of understanding, of forgiveness, of love. And, and that makes all the difference because the change that you can create from that space is infinitesimal. I mean, it's just, it's out of this world when you think of the things that people have done from that space. So I hope that I've kind of managed to convey <laughs> the difference. Another way that you can look at this energy that I'm trying to talk about, how you can actually experience it, is if you ask someone to help you, get them to stand in front of you, and you push them, for a moment they move, but then after they've moved, there's a resistance to the push that you've given them. And this is very much like the response to the anger energy. You might make an impression with anger initially while someone's gathering their bearings, but once that they've got their bearings, then there's major resistance to it. And you can't really do anything with that resistance because as soon as someone starts to resist you, they're no longer listening to you. They're no longer hearing where your pain is actually coming from because it's just masked in anger and their reaction to that anger. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have been triggered into feeling angry, it's okay to feel angry. I'm not saying that being or feeling angry is a bad thing. I'm just saying that projecting that anger will not get you what you want. So the best thing to do is to take yourself away, understand where the pain of your anger is coming from, and then to take positive action about what it is that has caused that. Not to start flinging your anger around, because that will not get you what you want at all. All that will get you is resistance and people not really hearing you. So take your time, find your space, find your centre, find your peace, find your love, and then try to create the change from that space, because you're results will be a whole different thing to what they will be if you're coming at things from anger. I hope you've enjoyed this week. Um, as usual, there's lots of links in the show notes below. So links to my website if you want to connect with me and you're interested in my coaching, um, links to my online courses and to the monthly Ho'oponopono session that I'm doing. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.